from the University of Queensland, uh, Brisbane, Australia. Uh, more interestingly, that's the place where one of our ex-colleagues is <laughs> currently based, Sunil Vinayak, with whom we, he worked with us uh, for two years uh, long ago. And Sunil comes and visits us uh, every winter and stays with us for at least a couple of weeks. So now we have an extension. We have more people coming from your <laughs> business school over. Welcome to I am on the bus. I'm sure this is not your first visit. As you had mentioned that you have been here before. Uh, he is here to present his research, which I'll let him talk rather than me clinically telling you the titles so of all yours. Dr. Papu, we normally uh, schedule this kind of a seminar over an hour, which includes questions as well. But we do have a buffer of 15 or 20 minutes to go over, right? And that's about it. And you may have some interruptions with some people walking in a little bit and all that. Please excuse us. Thank you. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me. Welcome to this uh, presentation. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. So this actually is a, yeah, it is on, yeah. So the results that I'm going to share with you, so these are part of uh, a research project we have completed uh, for Australian Red Cross blood service. So have you heard of uh, Red Cross? Yes. So in Australia, uh, people uh, don't sell their blood. So there is a national agency that is uh, responsible for blood collection and dissemination. Okay, that is uh, funded by the government of Australia. And they are responsible for this uh, very important job. The challenge that Red Cross has been facing is that they get a lot of offers of uh, endorsement. Okay, from a variety of uh, celebrities who want to be uh, seen to be working with uh, the good cause, donating blood and blood-related products. And also, a number of corporate houses like the Domino's, uh, they actually want to sponsor uh, Red Cross. So they are kind of in a luxurious position. So Red Cross wanted to understand what happens to their brand name if they are in partnership with uh, a celebrity or a corporate sponsor? And how does that influence their consumers' brand evaluations? So they gave us some funding, and the Australian Research Council simultaneously funded this uh, project. We conducted a series of uh, experiments. Um, Bettina Conwell, my co-author, is uh, at the University of Oregon. And Anne Wallin is uh, a research assistant. Currently, uh, she is uh, pursuing her PhD. She is with the UQ Business School. And this is going to be fairly informal uh, presentation. At any stage, if you have any queries, feel free to stop me. Okay? I am not going to be able to complete, finish all my slides. So I, I thought this is a forum where I can introduce myself and present my current and ongoing research so that uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, collaborate in the future. So for those of you um, who are wondering where exactly I come from, the UQ Business School, the University of Queensland Business School, is located in Brisbane, Australia. And uh, if you follow cricket, have you heard of uh, GABA, Olangaba? So that is uh, the stadium we have in the city. So University of Queensland has approximately 50,000 uh, students. And uh, at the business school, we have approximately 7,000 uh, students. We are a full service provider. We offer undergraduate programs as well as uh, master's and uh, PhD. So if, if you are wondering why I look like an Australian, I'm kidding. So I did my bachelor's in Andhra Pradesh, so the erstwhile Andhra Pradesh, at the JNTU College of Engineering, Anantapur. So these are my roots. Then I went on to do 
my MBA with the University of Waikato in New Zealand, and then I did my PhD with the University of New England in Australia. So there is one in Australia, not the North American one. So what do I work on? My PhD is in the area of brand equity. So brand equity measurement, I developed a, a scale and a method for measuring brand equity from a consumer perspective. So it also involved understanding what is the impact of a country's image on brand equity, how brand equity varies according to the perceived country of origin of a brand. So later, I try to understand how to measure the equity of a retailer's brand name. So for example, the Walmarts, the Costco's, the Myers, so on and so forth. So the next step was to see what is the value of a brand name, a, a, a country as a brand name. So we tried to examine what is the brand equity of Japan, Malaysia, China, so on and so forth. So my recent uh, research involves examining the impact of marketing communications. Can you use celebrity endorsement uh, to enhance brand equity perceptions? So uh, Amanda, she was uh, one of my honors uh, students, the first author here. And then we examined how corporate sponsorship might influence the brand equity for a given nonprofit brand. My most recent research involves understanding what is the relationship between a brand's innovativeness and how it contributes to brand equity. So the results that I'm going to share with you so this involves sponsorship and endorser portfolios. We have a question there. We have developed uh, different scales for uh, retailers and countries. So the first scale I developed was for manufacturer brands like Sony, Mitsubishi, and Toyota. Whereas the second scale was for measuring a retailer's brand equity. And then the third was for a country's brand equity. Okay. So let me introduce you to the notion of uh, a social partnership between uh, Red Cross Blood Service, which is trying to collect blood and uh, disseminate to the needy people and also different uh, entities like endorsers and corporate sponsors. So here is an example where most of you, rather all of you would know Sachin Tendulkar. So I thought I would take this example where he was actually uh, promoting this uh, crusade against cancer foundation. Okay. So celebrities, they do involve in promoting the social causes. Typically, they don't actually take any remuneration. And we also have corporate sponsors. They also promote social causes. In the example that you see here, so the Surf Life Saving Australia, they actually are present at beaches and they try to save you know, people who might otherwise drown on the beaches, okay? It is a non-profit organization. So what happens is these two are not isolated partnerships. Rather, there are instances where a corporate sponsor like Coca-Cola and a celebrities like Sachin Tendulkar might come together and support a cause like Support My School. So underprivileged schools, which do not have basic necessity, necessities, these guys come together and try to raise funds uh, for these causes. So the research that we have done 
tries to understand what happens to the cause. We support my school brand when two different entities, one a celebrity endorser and one a carpet sponsor, they come together. How does it influence the brand evaluations? So that is the key research question we have examined in this. Uh, Any questions? So typically, people use metrics like brand awareness, brand image, perception of quality, brand credibility. A, a battery of uh, outcome variables is available to understand what happens because of uh, the partnerships that a non-profit brand engages in. So I'll uh, show you as we progress. But please do remind me. So Red Cross is the example given here, which has partnerships with a number of celebrities and also a number of uh, corporate sponsors. So this is the complex uh, model that we estimated. And the motivation behind testing this model was a 2006 paper in the Journal of Marketing uh, where researchers have examined what happens to the corporate sponsor when they sponsor a social cause. Does it influence people's intentions to purchase the corporate sponsor's products? That's what they have examined. So we try to understand what happens to the cause or non-profit brand that actually has been sponsored or endorsed. So, so these are the outcome variables that we have included in our study. So you were asking me, how do you measure? So this is what we have measured. So for example, what is people's attitude towards the Red Cross? And what is their intention to support Red Cross? Given the partnership with uh, a celebrity endorser, what, let us say, Steve Waugh or Sachin Tendulkar, if they endorse Red Cross, variables like the fit between the endorser and the non-profit brand, and also, do people identify with the celebrity endorser? Do people identify with Sachin Tendulkar or Steve Waugh? And do they trust the celebrity endorser involved? Okay, so not all celebrity endorsers are seen trustworthy. Some are seen more trustworthy than others. And also, what kind of uh, attitudes do people have towards these partnerships? On the right-hand side, what you see here is a set of variables related to the corporate sponsor. So if you have a sponsor like Visa, Coca-Cola, MasterCard, so again, do people identify with uh, a given sponsor, whether it is Coca-Cola or Domino's? And do they see the sponsor as uh, trustworthy? Because people trust some organizations more than the others, right? And also, what kind of attitudes people have towards the partnerships between uh, Red Cross and the corporate sponsors? The, the partnership arrangement. So, so, let me introduce the key variables that we have included in the framework. Um, <clears throat> you're going to get into the measures of those constructs, right? Uh, could you spend a little bit time trying to, uh, uh, telling us a bit about the motivation to do this study? Because you see, what I understand is somebody has already done the endorser uh, to the cause fit and somebody has done the sponsor to the cause fit. What is the interestingness or the complication that we are trying to um, study in having this endorser and sponsor together um, trying to endorse a cause? I mean, what is the interestingness in that particular model that you are trying to uh, get to before we get into the actual 
results in the measurement. So, so far, that's a good question. Literature has examined these two in isolation. There is plenty of work in terms of the impact of the partnership between an endorser and a social cause and how it actually influences non-profit brands or causes that have been endorsed. And there is also a stream of literature in terms of the partnership between corporate sponsors and the social causes. But what increasingly has been happening is non-profits, they're actually embracing marketing principles and they're also using the marketing communications to promote themselves. So one strategy they use is through the use of newsletters. So in a given communication, a newsletter that they may send out to donors and people at large in terms of what kind of partnerships they have different uh, celebrities, what kind of partnerships they have different uh, with uh, corporate sponsors. But one thing they haven't been considering is what is the collective impact of having these two different entities in the same communication that they have been sending out to people. Okay? So that has been largely ignored. So we want to understand. Is there any background as to why, why this revolution took place from a single entity They are both studying. It appears that if you look at it, the left hand side and the right hand side are mirror I mean, images of each other, other than the fact that the actor changes, the endorser changes to a sponsor, right? Now, I am still trying to grapple with the thing as to uh, why should I study them together? <laughs> I mean, is there, a, is there a preconceived sort of uh, a hypothesis of complication that, uh, that I am trying to Sort of when people actually evaluate brand names together, so their evaluations are supposed to be different in comparison to when they evaluate two brands in isolation. So what people think of a, a social cause like Red Cross in isolation is different from what people think of a social cause in partnership with uh, a celebrity endorser. And added to that uh, complexity, what people think of uh, a social cause that has been in partnership with uh, an endorser plus another partnership with a corporate sp sponsor is actually is quite interesting because we don't know how portfolios work in terms of influencing the non-profit brands evaluations. Well, you have models, sorry. I agree. So, I mean, uh, what is uh, not shown in this model is the impact of uh, the attitude towards the sponsorship influencing the attitude towards the endorsement. And uh, we tested a two-way path separately in, a, in, a, in another model because uh, the data, as I was going to show you, is cross-sectional. We don't have a longitudinal data set. But still, we tested a two-way path between these two variables, and we found that attitude towards the sponsorship is what influences attitude towards the endorsement, but it is not the other. Influences attitude towards the endorsement. When the communication portfolio is presented to the customer, it is the attitude towards the sponsor that actually influences attitude towards their endorsement in addition to the multiple variables that have been shown here. But not the attitude towards the endorsement that influences attitude towards this transition. So does that mean that the brands don't really gain for having celebrities because... No, no, that, that, that's not the conclusion one can arrive at. It is rather 
if you have two partnerships here, which the attitude towards which partnership influenced the other. So in this uh, particular examination, what we found was uh, the partnership with the corporate sponsor, you know, plays a role in influencing people's attitudes towards the partnership with the endorser. But it doesn't rule out the impact of uh, the multitude of variables that we have in this model. But is there, is there like a uh, I mean, reason why it only works in one direction, not... Uh... Um, we still need to understand uh, why that is the case. We are speculating that might be due to the nature of the stimuli we have used. We have used a number of uh, non-profit as well as for-profit organizations in the newsletter we actually used as the stimuli for getting people's responses. So, I mean, just, uh, so is it, do you think that it's a possibility that the direction of effect might change when it's profit versus non-profit? Uh, is it possible? You mean the endorsed product? Yeah, I mean the, the, the target company is like Red Cross is a non-profit uh, yes. where the direction of effect is from attitude uh, towards the sponsorship to that affects the attitude towards endorsement. That's what you found. Yeah. So, I mean, is it a possibility that uh, when the nature of the target organization changes from non-profit to profit, so the direction of effect might flip from going from this to that? That's an interesting uh, future research direction. You know, we haven't included uh, for-profit organizations in the uh, ex investigation. So let me take you through. So the, these are the key variables uh, that are part of the investigation. So we measured people's uh, perceptions of uh, trustworthiness of the endorser, trustworthiness of the sponsor involved and another key variable in this study is identification. People do identify with uh, sporting teams, for example, our Indian cricket team and people identify with organizations like, you know, Apple, they identify with brands. So we measured how people, to what extent people identify with uh, an endorser, and also to what extent people identify with the sponsor that is included in the communication portfolio. So, one of the key variables is how well does the celebrity or the corporate sponsor fit with the selected nonprofit cause. So again, this definition has been uh, adopted from Simmons and becker -Olson. This is uh, one of the key papers, okay, which was the key motivation behind our study. So another key variable is uh, clarity of positioning. How clearly the non-profit brand is communicating its positioning. So given the context of uh, its partnership with an endorser and also its partnership with a corporate sponsor. So what is the perception of people? So I am going to... Sh uh, so why have you put trustworthiness as leading to fit? These can be two different uh, yeah. constructs as well, right? It's not always necessary either because uh, trustworthiness might or might not lead to, uh, sorry, identification. I think that was the second variable. It was shown as sequential, but that need not be the case. So uh, our, uh, one of our, so we have trustworthiness here and identification here. So one of the hypotheses is that identification mediates the impact of trustworthiness on fit. Okay, so the more trustworthy an endorser is seen, believed to be, the more they identify with the endorser. Similarly, the more trustworthy um, 
a, a corporate sponsor, for example, if I believe Apple is a trustworthy, the more likely I am to actually identify with Apple. So the more I identify with uh, Apple or any other corporate house, the more likely I am to believe that Apple actually fits well with uh, Red Cross or any other nonprofit brand. So the impact of identification and what role it uh, plays uh, in terms of influencing car nonprofit support behaviors in the context of communication portfolios hasn't been examined. So that, that's what we wanted to understand. So we have conducted three experiments, the results of one of which I'm going to share with you. So we collected uh, data from uh, mall shoppers. Um, so this is in Brisbane. So we used a team of uh, research assistants to collect the data. And we used a between subjects design. So we have uh, endorsement at two levels. One, a high fitting endorsement, and one that offers a low fit. And we also have sponsorship fit varied at two levels, high fit versus uh, low fit. And then we had two brands here. One is uh, Red Cross and the other is Leukemia Foundation. These two are used as, uh, you know, to increase the generalizability of the study. We were not interested in understanding the differences between them. So incidentally, both of them have agreed to give us uh, the data. Can you also control for participant and uh, uh, that Participants, their uh, identification with the process. Yes, yes, we did. We did measure them, but we did not use it as a control variable in this uh, in the results that I am going to share with you. So, the model is becoming too big for us. So, even this model, we tested it in two stages. So, did you see the correlation? At this stage, we have not, but we did measure identification, the respondent's identification with the cause as one of the variables, but we haven't used it as a covariate yet. So we also had the counterbalancing in place, you know, endorser-related questions first versus uh, sponsor-related questions first, but there were no differences. So in terms of uh, the fit manipulation, we have two endorsers here, uh, Kate Blanchett, an Australian Hollywood actress. Maybe some of you are familiar with her work in uh, Lord of the Rings. And also uh, Kate Moss, she is another um, uh, model. So we uh, relied on uh, pre-testing so to establish that these two people actually offer varying levels of fit uh, with the um, two non-profit brands that we have selected. So Kate Blanchett offers high fit, Kate Moss offers low fit. And also uh, we try to assess whether Coca-Cola and calls, these two are the sponsors actually included in this uh, study. So the fit between calls, which is a supermarket chain, national supermarket chain in Australia, so that is perceived to be high on a scale of uh, one to five. And the fit between Coca-Cola and the two non-profit brands is perceived to be low. So does that make sense? So we have a set of celebrity endorsers, high versus low fit, and we also have a set of uh, corporate sponsors, high versus low fit. So both have been pre-tested. So in terms of the communication vehicle, we have used a newsletter, okay? So we told people that uh, uh, either Kate Blanchett or Kate Moss is offering 
uh, an endorsement to the given non-profit brand here. And also, they were told that either a supermarket chain, Coles, or Coca-Cola is offering sponsorship. So we used a two by two by two design. So in terms of the newsletter used, so the newsletters were slightly different because uh, one had uh, um, uh, leukemia foundation and one had blood service. So people's attitudes towards these two newsletters were not significantly different. So we can't attribute the results to the differences between these two nonprofits. So we actually adopted measures from the literature in terms of measuring the trustworthiness of uh, the endorsers as well as the sponsors. And uh, we also used measures from the literature for measuring identification with the endorser and the sponsor. And we used uh, items from Simmons and Becker Olson to measure fit between the celebrity and the cause and between the sponsor and the cause. So th these are the three items used for measuring identification between the celebrity endorser okay, and the customer. Uh, are you with me? So this is how we measured fit between the endorser and the non-profit. So we used a one to five Likert scale. So sponsor non-profit fit was measured using three items. So clarity of positioning, rather how well a non-profit brand is seen to communicate its positioning is measured using the three items. We captured the outcome variables, attitudes towards the nonprofit, intention to support the nonprofit, again from Simmons and Becker Olson. So, what did we find? The selected uh, celebrity endorsers, they not only varied in terms of fit, but they also varied in terms of uh, how people identified with them whether people saw them as trustworthy or not, and whether people believed they are attractive or not. So the differences were not significant here, but on identification and trustworthiness, there were marked differences. Whether people thought Kate Blanchett versus Kate Moss actually were different on these traits. So I'll uh, share the results in detail with you. Okay. So we also had a control group. So people's uh, attitude towards the nonprofit brand, so Red Cross and leukemia, they were not uh, perceived to be different actually. So we can't attribute the results uh, to the differences between the brands. So intention to support the brand, again, the differences were not significant. So this is from control group data. Okay, so credibility of the non-profit brand, again, the differences were not significant. So what did we find? We found FIT had a positive effect on attitude towards the social endorsements and social sponsorships. So that means the better fitting partnerships with the celebrity, okay, uh, the better fitting partnership with the corporate sponsor, they actually had positive impact on, if it had positive impact on attitude towards the sponsorships, and also attitude towards the endorsement. 
explore places. I'm just wondering if you were as curious as I would to see if things would prevail the same way. If you were to flip the direction of the arrow from sponsor, non-profit fit to sponsor plus I mean, The reason I'm asking is possibly you infer a level of uh, trustworthiness because there is an association that you try to uh, look at. I mean, you try to make inferences about trustworthiness based on, I mean, what if the direction of fit to trustworthiness is reversed? I mean, would things be any different? Okay. Uh, are you saying that uh, we perceive, people may perceive uh, a sponsor to be more trustworthy because uh, they have actually entered into an arrangement uh, with, a, with, with a cause? Is it what you're saying? Uh, the, the I mean, I'm just beginning to wonder if they are as subtle as it's been. Okay. In, in terms of uh, the distinction between them empirically, empirically they are distinct constructs. But also perceptions of trustworthiness, they are more enduring than perceptions of fit. Perceptions of fit could be between a particular sponsor and a, any variety of uh, causes. Incidentally, in this case, we have uh, Leukemia Foundation and uh, Red Cross. So it is uh, more likely that trustworthiness derives, uh, leads uh, to fit rather than fit leading to trustworthiness. It's more enduring. Trustworthiness perceptions are more enduring. And, uh, I mean, this could be a little naive uh, because I'm not that aware of the planning picture. I'm wondering if uh, the aspects of endorser itself will have, uh, uh, I mean the endorser itself could be a brand in itself, right? Like such a I mean, could be possibly a bigger brand. Uh, so to that extent, the effect coming from endorser, because he's just an endorser, he's a big, like an independent brand in itself, then I mean, how do you, so the uh, people that you have used, those, uh, you know, High familiarity and low familiarity, high familiarity, high familiarity. Will that vary if uh, people are uh, you know, much more stellar in their I mean, I'm saying endorser ceases to be a mere endorser, endorser becomes a quasi sponsor. Okay, if I understand the question correctly, so there are several. Like the analogy I would draw is uh, Bill Gates and his foundation. I mean, you could see him as an endorser, you could see him as a sponsor as well, associated with his own foundation. Okay. Um, I see what you are saying. So the fundamental uh, argument is, we have three different brands here. Okay? Endorser itself, uh, they are a brand name. I agree with you. The sponsor itself uh, is a brand. We are actually trying to understand the partnership between the two brands, incidentally, one of which is an endorser. Okay? But what we have done, we have used a number of endorser-related variables, like whether they like the person, okay, as a covariate, attractiveness, their expertise. They are not shown in the model, but we have used them as covariates so that the results cannot be attributed to them. attractiveness of the endorser as well as the expertise of the endorser. So he or she may be having, for example, in cricket when it comes to Sachin Tendulkar. And we also have, when it comes to the sponsor, again, people like the sponsor. Maybe it is the awareness with the, of the sponsor that is driving the results. So we have used a number of sponsor-related variables as well as endorser-related variables as covariates, so as to rule out alternative explanations for the absurd results. Do you control the gender of the parties? No, we didn't. I, uh, the endorser non-profit fit or the sponsor non-profit fit, these two constructs, since you ran an experiment, these are 
these are treatments that you manipulate. Measure. We well, you, 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 you did select an endorser, you did select specific sponsors. So in that sense, you are manipulating. Yeah. So, so what, is the, what is the need to actually find a causal effect uh, between trustworthiness of the endorser and a treatment that you are manipulating? I mean, that causation again, I mean, that, I mean, what, it's, a, it's an extension to the question that she asked. Why that arrow? Because I'm actually manipulating that fit uh, element in my experiment. If this had been a pure survey based thing, then, yeah, then these are different constructs and you would probably try to find a relationship among them. But here you are actually manipulating. One of the problems with the current uh, research both on sponsorship and also on endorsement is that they use different people or different sponsors to manipulate fit. So in this example, we have used Kate Blanchett and Kate Mass as high and low fit, right? But these two people also vary along a number of other diamonds. Two, two human beings are actually different not only in terms of fit, but also they vary in terms of their hair color and whatnot, so many things, attractiveness. But the pro problem with uh, current research is they do not account for all those other variables, okay, on which two, two human beings or two celebrities vary. Similarly, if you take sponsors, the problem with previous research is that, so if you take uh, Apple and uh, uh, Samsung, these two brand names vary not only in terms of fit with the social cause, but across a number of other variables, including trustworthiness and how people identify with uh, the brand names. Most of the previous work, they, when they conduct manipulation checks, they see if the fit varies high and low between two sponsor brands. They also see two selected celebrities if they vary along the dimension of it, high versus low fit, but they don't really understand whether trustworthiness or identification or expertise or attractiveness, what is their role, okay? By not actually correctly estimating their impact, so the results so far observed, they're actually prone to alternative explanations. One of the biggest contributions in our own, sorry, in our own research is that we have, we, we have actually allowed for the estimation of all these indirect effects. So in a traditional model, it would be shown that they have controlled for trustworthiness. It would be shown that they have controlled for endorser trustworthiness, okay? But they would have ignored the indirect effects. So this is, uh, the, this kind of modeling offers a better control in terms of estimating the true impact of uh, fit on the outcome variables. And also what is not shown in this model is, uh, you are asking me, we have manipulated fit right. So fit is a categorical variable when it is high fit and low fit when you use two different uh, celebrities or two different sponsors. So what we did is, we have a categorical variable here, not shown in front of you, and there are paths leading from this categorical variable onto the outcome variables, as well as onto these different traits. So, if the manipulation works, we would expect the path from the categorical fit variable onto these three variables to be statistically significant, okay? So that is how we actually tested if it is due to the person or the specific brand name or if it is due to the manipulation. So rather than relying on the categorical variables, we actually have measured them and included them in the model. That is another improvement that we have done in this study. So, and again we found that uh, uh, higher fit led to greater clarity of brand positioning. 
and this happened for both endorsements and sponsorships. So we also found indirect effects of it on attitude towards the nonprofit, and this is via clarity of positioning. So this is another contribution of our study where the existing literature does not account for the role of clarity of positioning. So this is almost missing in previous literature. So this is a new variable that has been added, but what we found, this actually accounts for most of the variance. So the indirect effects of it via intention to support the on intention to support the non-profit brand, they are also supported. So they, they, this is for both endorsement and, and the sponsorship. So if attitude towards the partnership did not affect attitude towards the non-profit. Again, if you see in the diagram, so attitude towards a particular partnership with a sponsor or endorser have not actually influenced attitude towards the non-profit. Okay? It's not the partnerships. So irrespective of people's attitude towards the partnership, they are willing to support the non-profit. Remember, this is blood donation and also Leukemia Foundation cancer research. And attitudes, they are also enduring. I mean, you can't really change them overnight. So the reviewers were asking, you know, it may be attitude towards the non-profit that is driving the result here. So. So overall, what we found was, just one second, the, the overall indirect effect of it on attitude towards the nonprofit, via the two variables was actually supported. Uh, um, I'll, I'll show you. So we have two different uh, mediating variables here. One is clarity of positioning, and the second one was attitude towards the partnership. So what we found was that the impact of it was routed through these two variables collectively. Are you with me? So it's not clarity of positioning alone, part attitude towards the partnership alone, but together they have transmitted the impact of it onto attitude. Your cash lines are that means you didn't find that effect. That is true. So that that is how can you make that uh, conclusion? I mean, if you just if assuming that empirically you have not found the validity for that, then the inferencing is that uh, the fit, both the endorser as well as sponsor fit, uh, have an impact on clarity of the non-profit positioning and that is what drives the whole thing and these are all superfluous variables. The attitude, the mental state, uh, state of mind vis-a-vis -vis the uh, endorser as well as the state of mind vis-a-vis -vis the sponsor are irrelevant variables. All that matters is the fit and the fit le leading to the clarity which leads to the attitude for the, towards the non-profit. That, that would be the way I would, I would sort of infer your results, right? You know, the interpretation is the specific indirect effect is not statistically significant. So that means the the impact of it on attitude towards the non-profit, if we consider only the attitude towards the partnership between the endorser and non-profit, is not statistically significant. But if you consider the collective impact of these two mediating variables, so the total indirect effect is statistically significant. So, no, I'm not sure I understand that because um, what is the total impact of the impact of both the mediating variables? It's just see the attitude. Given the way you 
specify the model. Oh, okay. So you have another arrow going down and going up into intention from attitude. Okay. I, I didn't see that. The black one. The, the one that is going straight down from the attitude to towards the endorsement yeah. to somewhere and then comes back to intention to support. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so what I would uh, like you to uh, see the path that is not supported here. Okay? That is an indirect effect not supported. And then if we... Yeah, so the indirect effect also was not supported, but the total indirect effect or the overall indirect effect, when you consider the mediating roles of uh, uh, clarity of positioning as well as the attitude towards the partnership, then the combined indirect effect, the sum of indirect effects is statistically significant. That is what is interesting. The same thing happened for intention to support. Can I just go back to the previous figure? No, okay. Yeah. So in case of sponsor, uh, effect of the sponsor, mm -hmm. almost everything is going through that clarity of uh, positioning, right? There yeah. is, so that is like uh, the main fulcrum through which all the effects of uh, sponsor is operating because in that case, both those uh, arrows from attitude towards sponsorship to intention and attitude towards sponsorship to attitude towards non-profit, they are not supported. But he's got another arrow which goes down and breaks up and goes up. I don't know what that arrow is. No, no that is coming from attitude towards endorsement to intention. The intention, yeah. So that side, this whole path is kind of has vanished. So all the effects are actually going through that uh, clarity of non-profit to this moment. What was the point of that? A, a much more broader that is true, but a broader explanation is, in, if you take these two in conjunction with each other, both of them together collectively are they are playing a role. But if you look at, uh, if you look at only the, um, the this particular variable, then the conclusion would be it's not playing its uh, role in transmitting the impact. But that would be erroneous if we also consider the impact of clarity of positioning. So. Two variables collectively they play a different role. If you no, how do you come to that? That's the point that is confusing us. Because the attitude in no way is connected to clarity or intention. If those two arrows vanish, then how do you really account for the combined? The the if we consider specific indirect effects versus sum of indirect effects then the explanation will be much clearer. So the lack of support for this arrow, for, for this path, or for this path, should not um, lead us to conclude that these two variables are not playing a role in transmitting the impact of a, uh, fit onto support behaviors. Okay, that looks counterintuitive, yeah. but when you, when, you, when you combine the transmitting impact of clarity of position, it was acting on its own perfectly, right? The paths are supported. But when you combine the impact of these two transmitting variables, then attitude towards the sponsorship also is playing a role in transmitting its impact. So I would encourage you to look at literature on specific indirect effects versus sum of indirect effects. Then the interpretation will be much more uh, palatable. So at the, uh, if, if we have a look, it looks a little bit counterintuitive. I agree. OK? OK? Because this path is not supported. How can this variable? For the right hand side, that attitude towards sponsorship yeah. is irrelevant, actually, according to that. No, no. That's, that would be our, uh, you know, first impression. But if you look at the literature on specific versus sum of indirect effects, then the interpretation is attitude towards the partnership and the end is highlighted or in italics, clarity of positioning together, they play a role. So when you did the specific indirect effects, this was not, no. attitude was not significant. No, actually, so... 
So could it be the, the sum? It's again clarity which is lending. It's uh, it's because of clarity that there is greater uh, there is significance to the relationship. Because when you look at specific, all I can say is collectively they are doing. Uh, uh, no, no, I understand that, but I'm just asking you, like, speculate. Would it is it likely that because it's taken uh, attitude is with clarity, it's because of the presence of clarity, because clarity has such a strong effect that we are seeing it's a mathematical. Yeah, I think we can uh, we can uh, test whether indirect effect of clarity is bigger or stronger than the indirect effect of. Uh, I, I would guess it might be the case. Because this clarity is a very interesting uh, concept and like, uh, and so it's uh, maybe, it's nice, it's good to see that it's getting, uh, it's playing a significant role and it's very understudied I think. So this is interesting that it has. Okay. How are we doing in terms of time? Okay, so let me, uh, quickly take you. So the same thing happens in terms of uh, people's intention to support the non-profit brand. Okay? So again, clarity of positioning plus attitude towards the partnership. They collectively, together, they are able to transmit the impact of it. So there were questions in terms of the role of uh, trustworthiness and identification, okay? Um, so, identification, it has been transmitting the impact of uh, trustworthiness, okay? For both sponsors as well as um, the endorsers. Identification has a positive effect on fit and a trustworthiness has a positive effect on identification. So, the impact of trustworthiness is indirect. In the literature, so this is another uh, piece missing actually. So, people have estimated either direct effects, the control for trustworthiness, or control for identification, and then conclude, you know, likewise. That's, that's wrong. So, a lot of experimental research published in good journals, okay, so they, they don't actually check for these indirect effects. That's wrong. So, identification also has indirect effects, indirect effects on attitude towards the endorsement. Again, these effects actually haven't been properly estimated uh, in the literature. So our, uh, what is interesting, what is new is the investigation of uh, communication portfolios, combining uh, celebrity endorsement and uh, corporate sponsorships, particularly when the practice by nonprofits is uh, to use all these in a single communication vehicles. If you look at the um, newsletters that are being sent out by several uh, nonprofits, you would see that they mention, you know, we have received endorsement from so and so, we have received a sponsorship from so and so, but they don't really try to understand what might happen to consumers' uh, evaluations. Um, yeah, we have examined fit effects. So the role of uh, Customer identification has been under-researched in the literature. So I am happy to take uh, questions now. Uh, so the direction uh, shown in the model from, from fit to uh, uh, clarity of positioning. So I believe uh, the clarity of positioning might be impacting the perception of fit. Uh, but you are saying uh, the fit comes first and uh, the direction, from fit it goes to clarity of positioning. But I, I think the fit also impacts the uh, perception of fit. Uh, 
So positioning, the clarity of positioning also impacts the perception of fit. So how do you account for that in the model? Um, empirically, we tested models in which the direction is uh, the other way. The models were not supported. But uh, conceptually, it makes more sense uh, where fit between a couple of brands actually drives uh, people's perceptions of clarity. Because perceptions of clarity depend not only on the particular partnership, but it also depends on the or uh, a range of other things. The marketing mix currently pursued by this particular non-profit brand, that also determines uh, clarity of positioning. Right. So that's what I'm saying. That should come first, and that should lead to the perception of fit. Uh, not uh, the other way that uh, perception of fit is leading to the clarity of position. Why would that be? Uh, as you said, it's more enduring. The, percept, the clarity of positioning is more enduring and it, it is impacted by so many other things as well as just perception of fit between one uh, or the two uh, incidental things in this question. So, percept, the clarity of positioning comes first and that impacts the perception of fit. Uh, but we didn't uh, vary clarity of positioning, right? In this uh, investigation, we manipulated fit. That's what changed. But clarity of positioning, it has been the same across all the respondents. That's what we would argue. What's the reason for selecting the two trustworthiness as the variable for a, uh, for the celebrity endorsement? The literature has done that, but uh, when we see the company uh, of sponsoring something, then trustworthiness seems to be the relevant variable. But for celebrities. There could be a lot of other variables like say, charisma or anything else that could influence uh, people. The literature says when it comes to endorsers, attractiveness, trustworthiness, their expertise in a given field, all these variables collectively they are termed as credibility. So credibility of a celebrity is kind of known to be a key variable that is known to influence how people view the partnerships. So that is uh, the motivation behind selecting those variables. So this statement, one step further, in case of Red Cross, Red Cross is a well-known brand. Mm -hmm. It may not actually need uh, an endorsement or a sponsorship. But will this actually be useful if, say, it's a fledgling NGO or a non-profit, which is trying to come up and tries to use uh, either a celebrity, in which case even the fit or uh, you know the clarity of positioning of the non-profit itself is, is I mean, it's not clear. So will this actually help there? Uh, that's why that would be a wonderful avenue for uh, future research actually. That's the, that will be our next step. That's what we have been asking ourselves. So these two are familiar brands, both the Leukemia Foundation and also uh, Red Cross. Yeah, it would be fantastic to understand what happens in the case of a, you know, brand that has that doesn't have as much exposure as the two non-profit brands that we have selected. It would be wonderful to examine. Uh, so and, and before I forget, we did include familiarity with the brand as one of the covariates. The familiarity with the endorser and familiarity with the sponsor, not familiarity with the uh, non-profit brand, okay? Because the literature also argues awareness of the sponsored cause or endorsed cause is one of the outcome variables, okay? So people examine, is there an impact on brand awareness, brand familiarity, brand recall, when the non-profit is uh, in a relationship with uh, an endorser or a sponsor? So we haven't included that one. Yeah. Uh, so, how did you come across the, uh, the clarity of positioning? Was it from literature or you discovered it? Uh, in clarity of positioning and clarity and consistency. So, one stream of literature argues that these are drivers of brand credibility. Adam and White. So, they developed a model in which brand credibility, perception of quality, so they are driven by clarity and consistency. So that is how we wanted to understand if uh, clarity can actually transmit the impact of... Uh, is it included consistency as well or consciously did not? 
we cautiously you know left it out already the model is quite complex so we could actually include a number of mediators or moderators okay so even this model given the difficulties in collecting data from donors we also had another experiment where we collected data from the donors so the sample size available was 120 okay so we couldn't actually have tested this uh, such complex model using structural equations modeling which was the data analysis approach here so we tested the model in stages so there was a question on the impact of uh, attitude towards the partnership uh, sponsorship attitude towards the endorsement so we tested this model separately okay so where we found it is the sponsorship that actually drives the attitude towards the endorsement and remember this is only cross sectional data we didn't have longitudinal data to examine two way relationships but we thought we will test but we attribute uh, the effect uh, to the kind of stimuli that we have used in the newsletter we had we included four four organizations two non profits and two for profits so only two were you know related to the study the other two were filler items so our uh, view is that because we had four organizations maybe that actually has driven the result in favor of uh, the attitude towards the sponsorship influencing attitude towards the endorsement questions uh, Thank you very much for on behalf of the audience. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, painstakingly explaining your research. It was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you.